So what I'm going to talk about is really based on my perspective and then what I think other, other producers perceive as, um, as the problem, if you will, the nitrogen deposition in the park, and a little bit about where I've, I'm coming from, how my perceptions um, were formed, and, and I have some similarities, I think, with other producers and, and some that are not. Um, I, I don't have an agricultural background. My wife and I started dairying as first generation dairy farmers um, moving here from California. So I don't have the culture that Bill um, talks about, although for 30 years I've been doing this, I think maybe some of it's seeped in. I certainly know about it, but I don't have that gener gener generation history. So um, my perspective is a little different. I think the new agriculturists will, will We'll, we'll find some of the things that I believe now um, and, and as we go on. This is really my perspective. This is what I see um, every morning when I walk through my cow barn site. That's Long's Peak. National Park is pretty much right there. This is looking right through the freestall door. And so when I walk in the pen 15 and I look at my cows, on a clear day, I, I get to see the park. And what you don't see in that picture, of course, is that on the other side of this wall is my manure storage area. And so as I walk through the farm, I, I, I do get to remind myself, I don't think about nitrogen deposition 24-7, but um, it, it, it is something that's on my mind. I don't think it is on, on a lot of producers' minds. Um, if you turn around in this barn that I'm in, it's about 300 feet long, and walk to the other end of the barn and look out the other door, what you see is the Buffalo Creek subdivision. There are 400 houses right across the street from me, and, um, and the contrast is remarkable. Um, I try to look west. But in fact, that subdivision has helped to, to shape my perspectives when we first opened our, our expanded dairy and they had just finished or had just started building the subdivision. I uh, got a phone call from a woman and... Uh, this has stayed with me forever, really, and maybe is one of the reasons I'm actually just standing here today. She, she said to me, I've just purchased a lot in a subdivision across the street from you, and I'm going to have to give up my $2,000 deposit on it because the odors coming off your dairy are unbearable. And, and it, there's not much you can say to someone like that. You can say you're sorry. I don't think that does much. It's a lot of money for someone. It's a lot of money for me. And... And so I did start thinking about air pollution and odors. And, and I, my experience really is, is my, I have my education. I had a few years behind my belts as a dairy farmer then, but didn't have to deal with this at all. Um, so I started learning about it and um, learning about how odors are, are formed on dairies and about anaerobic digestion and aerobic digestion and fiber and protein and all the things that contribute to odor, and among them, of course, is ammonia. And in the course of doing that, this gentleman right here decided that I should be, I should apply to the Air Quality Control Commission, and I did not embrace it, as he might have suggested, um, and I did not have that commitment to, to agriculture, really, but I, it did form. He, he not only made me do it, he made them accept my application. I don't know how he did all that. He was a lot better looking then. And then, so when my term with that commission ended, he, he made me apply to the Water Commission. <laughs> He's a good friend. So, um, there are some other slides in here. I, I, I have, in, in, in the same regard, decided to, that, that agriculture needed local, um, in my county, representation. So I have, I have been involved in, in these other groups as well, and of course, the, the National Park. So what I would like to finally talk about, and there's going to be some duplication here, so I get to push the button maybe a little faster than I planned, but that's all right. Um, our contributions, agricultural contributions to the problem in the park, how we create buy-in um, and why we should care about, about making some changes um, and, and what we have done so far. This is, you're going to see this inventory about 10 more times today, I think, but um, it, it's telling if you look at the numbers a little bit, and yeah, it's 11 years old, and, and it's an estimation, and, but I think that, that likely the, the sense of it is correct. And, um, and what does it say to, to agriculture 
it, it, it tells us right off the bat that we're the big dog in the park. And, um, and we have to accept that. If we don't, there's, there's really not much more we're going to um, accomplish. We need the will to do it. But what I would like to stress a little bit here is what was alluded to is, is where our urban brothers and sisters are going to take this. And, and right now it is focused on agriculture, and I think we need to step up and, and take responsibility for our share of this problem, which is likely a great share. Um, but urban sources are, are really quite interesting if, if people will think about it. It's, it's easy to always blame the big dog, but there's a lot of people in this state. We have a growing population, and urban emissions will increase just by a fact of the bigger population. In fact, in Colorado, agriculture is contracting. So as we um, put controls, voluntary controls, hopefully, online and the population is growing, there's a real chance and a real fear, at least from, in the agriculture, that, that our good work and our reductions will actually be masked by what the population is doing. And, and so industrial and local governments, the, those, those particular emitters are the result of um, a growing population. This is the inventory. You might be able to read it. The top two, two parts is, is agriculture. The very top part is um, livestock. And this is what those pie charts were made from. It's, um, it's interesting if you look at the urban sources that perhaps will not reduce as quickly as, as we hope agriculture will. There, if you look at the at these these three categories here, they put, and this is the front range on the right, and the state is on the left. Left, they kind of add up to livestock, and so there. While we are a, a major contributor, it, it's it's really from an agriculturist point of view, it, it's not fair just to discount others. This is from the state demographers website. This is from. Um, 2010 census, and as I said, agriculture is contracting. Um, the blue part is what we're talking about here regionally. That's the, the front range, the area on the east side of the Rockies. We're right now at about 4 million people, and by 2040, we're going to be half again as big. This, this plan ends in 32. It's supposed to bottom out. And so we, we, we really are up against more than just our own emissions. And, and I think what, what Phyllis was saying is, is really true. We have to be the leader in this. We have to say we're going to be responsible and we're going to lead you kicking and screaming just the way we've been in, into doing better for our park. But in order for us to do that, we have to overcome some obstacles. Not everybody has has um, bought into this. We we have made some some good strides, and I think education is really what this committee is going to end up doing the most of. Um, but on the farm, we're just kind of used to the smell of ammonia and other and other pollutants, and and so some farmers that culture, it's the smell of money, all that stuff that we say. Um, we got to kind of keep. The, change our perspective a little bit. And the fact that we have had a lot of regulations thrown at us um, and that we have paid for infrastructure is, is still on the minds of a lot of producers and, and perhaps they're not ready to, to join this cause. Um, there is generally in our country, you might have noticed a lot of anti-government feeling, um, certainly in agriculture that's true. A lot of it is born from economics, so the economics of, of our business businesses. We have very low margins, very high risk, and we're up against this, this idea in our country that food is a given and people don't seem to think that they should pay as much for food as, as other things. Um, so what, what should we be um, concerned about as, as, uh, as a group and as an industry? Um, we, we need to, to have buy-in. We need producers to, to understand that, that they are a part of, of this issue, this problem, and, and put behind those, those memories of, of the regulations that we've had. We are just getting used to, to being regulated for water, and 
um, have spent considerable time and money um, taking care of, of that issue. Why we should do this, it, it seems easy to say it's the right thing to do. It is. This, this park is important to everyone in the state. I think it goes beyond the park. Of course, we have lots of parks. There's 12 <laughs> class three wilderness areas in Colorado, and I think eventually we'll, we'll be talking in, about um, protecting them all. In fact, this regional haze effort that Phyllis mentioned did involve all those parks, and we'll, we, in, uh, in this issue, of nitrogen deposition will reap the benefits of, of, of the reductions um, put in place for, for the regional haze effort. Um, farmers have this culture that Bill talked about of being with nature, of, of being part of, uh, of the land, being stewards of air and well of water, not air so much, we're trying, um, and wanting to, to to take care of the places that they visit. And we have a good history of, of outdoor sports and agriculture, um, camping, fishing, hunting. Um, it's, it's something that, that in agriculture we need to take care of, and I, and I hope we want to take care of. Um, BMPs, as we've discussed before, are, are um, key to this. Um, it's, it's really good business to do some of the things that have been described. Um, Buying nitrogen, be it for feed or for fertilizer, is just an expense that needs to be reduced, if only for economics reasons, and um, and it just doesn't make sense to feed it if or put it in the ground if if in fact it's it's not needed and wasted. Um, implementation is 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 important, and if it's voluntary, it's a lot more palatable. If it's if it's forced on us, I think it, it won't be so. So we have done a lot, we being this this group that we, we represent here. Um, we we've we we have spread the word, if you will, about a lot of these BMPs. A lot of them are, are as I said, are are cost effective. We on the dairy industry, we every day monitor nitrogen in our milk. I can do that just on the web and um, and if I see that's that's getting out of control, I can I can get a hold of my nutritionist. In fact, using a nutritionist is one of the BMPs that we've been talking about. The idea of putting nitrogen on on crop ground is 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 important, but getting it in the ground is even more important. This is maybe a, an area where we can do a little more work, um, and uh, and I think we will. Research we. We've actually done a lot for research. Jay has been on my farm. Um, his predecessors have been on my farm. And we provide um, access to, to our animals, to our, our records, um, to our facilities. And, and, and I think we, we are getting um, some cutting edge results as, as Jay was talking um, about some of his robots. And, and these, are, these are things that are just going to make, make us uh, better producers and and help us in our efforts in the park. We have actually produ um, provided cash and uh, and time, volunteer time on on some other committees. I know that Dr. Archibek is is going to speak later about this National Air Quality Site Assessment Tool that CLA has provided funding for in part with Nash with uh, NRCS and other land grant universities. We've worked for years, maybe four or five years on this project. It's a, a web-based producer um, evaluation tool. And, uh, and I, I think you, if you're interested in it, you can easily find it on the web. It, it shows producers how to manage, what they can do to manage their farm, make changes, or in fact, if they're building the new farm, how they can reduce four or five different pollutants. And ammonia is among them. And education, as I suggested, what for a producer, what what we need is 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 education for for just about everything we do on the farm anymore. Um, this the symposium that Phyllis discussed, we we had such a, a really great one in, in 2012. We had uh, speakers from agriculture and the university, and EPA was there, and Rocky Mountain National Park had a spokesman there, and. Uh, we had producers and industry representatives there, and we had the media 
there. And we, we got some great press. We made the Washington Post. We made newspapers up and down the front range. We were on the, on the television. We, we got a, a real access to more producers and more importantly, I think, to the public to let them know that we are trying to be responsible and, um, and, and help, again, help with this problem. And Phil has discussed the uh, Environmental Defense Fund and, and, and brochures that we've made. We've, we've, we've done that. I think we'll do more. I, I, it's just Im important to engage um, more producers and, um, and begin to engage the public. And there is our stack group on site. Be willing to pay per cow per day. Yeah. And what are you selling? I'm just saying, trying to get at what are you willing to pay to accomplish the goal of getting rid of the odor and the nitrogen? You know, are you willing to pay anything? For anything? Well, I, I don't know if you've actually paid attention to the dairy industry right now, but I'm lucky to pay my fee guy. Um, so, I, I guess I can't answer that. If you if you have more specific question, I, I think I could say. But per, in fact, people do that. There's people selling snake oil, oil all over the place, and and so um, I, I I have not bitten on that, and it mostly has to do with lagoon management. And um, but I, I I don't know. Would you want a, a dollar a head a day, something like that? No, I can't do that.